this video, I'll share with you some impressive Python projects that look great on a resume and that really showcase your ability as a programmer and your skill with Python. These projects will be in different categories like web development, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data analysis, and all of the other things that Python is really good at. So with that said, let's dive into the video. So I'm going to start listing a ton of different projects, but I do want to mention that you need to have a really strong foundation in programming and in Python before you can start working on anything this complicated. Now, if you don't already have that, you can check out my course, ProgrammingExpert.io. This is designed to make you a software engineer as quickly as possible and has all of the stuff you need to get really good at Python and just programming in general. So it has object-oriented programming, advanced programming, software design, software engineering tools, five completely guided programming projects that you can work on, as well as over 250 coding questions and assessments for each section so that you actually know that you understand all of the content that you're learning from over the 100 videos. Anyways, you guys can check it out from the link in the description and use code TIM for a discount. With that said though, let's start getting into these resume projects. Now the first kind of category of projects I have here is artificial intelligence. Now in my opinion, these are the most fun to work on and they also stand out a lot on a resume because even though they might not take a ton of time, they're just really cool. They sound impressive and that's kind of what you're going for with these type of projects. So the first idea I have here is to make an artificial intelligence that can play a game. So you can start with something really simple like Pong. Make a neural network that can play the game of Pong. Not the easiest thing in the world, but definitely doable, and you could 100% put that on a resume, especially for a more junior position. You can make an AI that plays Tetris that automatically rotates the shapes and moves it in the correct direction. Maybe you have AIs play against each other in the game of Tetris. There's a ton of stuff you can do. Next, you can make an AI that plays Flappy Bird. I actually have an entire tutorial series on this channel that shows you how to do that. And if you're looking for some concrete steps here on how you would accomplish something like this, you can use a module in Python called Neat. Now, Neat is a neural evolution of augmented topologies. This is a really cool algorithm that actually takes a bunch of neural networks, runs them all through your game, and then takes the best of those neural networks and breeds them together, and then continues this for generations until you eventually get a neural network that can say, beat the game or is really good at completing it. Now, of course, there's a ton of other stuff that you can do with AI. You can make an AI chatbot. You can make an AI that trades stocks for you. You can do all kinds of stuff, but I really like the game idea because you can actually build the game yourself in something like Pi Game and then design an AI in whatever way you like to actually play the game for you. So moving on now to the web development section. Now I will note that there is an unlimited number of websites that you can make. Python is very flexible when it comes to web development, but I'm gonna recommend here that you make something like a social media clone. So something like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Maybe you get creative and do something like Codegram where people post code instead of posting regular photos. Whatever, you can get as creative as you want. And of course, you're going to build a slim down version. You're not going to build a full Instagram app or a full Twitter. You're going to build kind of the core features where users can sign in and sign out. They can post something. Maybe they can search for different users and look at a profile. They can like and they can comment. That alone is a ton of different features. And even if you just build a really bare bones version, it's pretty impressive. Now, the reason it's impressive is because if you're making something like this, you need to make not only a front end, but a back end as well. Now, personally for me, when I build front ends for these websites, I go really, really simple. I just use something like Bootstrap, which is a CSS framework. I'll do plain JavaScript and HTML. You don't need to get into anything too complicated like React unless you already know that. But the core here is gonna be the backend and how you're hand handling data, sorry, security, and then the database integration that you have. So that's why this is a good resume project because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of different components that need to be connected together. And there's a lot that you can learn when you're making this and that you can talk about in an interview about this project. So again, in terms of some concrete recommendations here, if you're building a website, you're gonna use Flask or Django, or you're going to build a separate front end and a separate back end, and you're gonna have an API on the back end using something like Fast API or uh, Django REST framework or Flask REST, right? There's all different kinds of stuff that you can do here. I'm assuming if you guys are at this level in terms of building projects, you already know what I'm talking about. But you're going to have some type of back end, some type of front end, some type of database to store this information. You're going to have to learn a lot to make this, and it's going to look really good on a resume. All right, so continuing, I have another web development-ish idea, and this is to build a live chat application. 
So something like Telegram, something like Facebook Messenger, something like WhatsApp, where you have the ability to maybe add a contact or add a user, and then you can chat with them in a chat room of some sort using Sockets. Now, Sockets is kind of a live messaging system. It's an ability for you to actually send information through the web without having to say upload it to a database and then pull the information from the database. It's a really quick way to transmit messages specifically or different commands or kind of events that have occurred. So this is definitely a really impressive thing to put on a resume, especially if you implement a smooth and polished chat application. And this is actually something that I did to get a job at Shopify. Now, I didn't end up working at Shopify, but the project I submitted to them and that I kind of walked them through was a live chat application where I implemented it with sockets. And then I built the user interface of this using uh, what do you call it? HTML, CSS and JavaScript, just a plain, you know, HTML website with a really simple UI. But the whole core of the project was the fact that users could communicate in live time with very little delay. It's like when you go on your messenger on your iPhone or on your Android and you see the little three dots pop up. The reason they can do that is using something similar to sockets where in live time you're actually communicating with each other. Again, you're not adding stuff to a database, pulling it from the database and doing stuff in a really slow and sluggish way. So I think this is a cool project. I'll leave you guys to come up with more details related to that. But if you want some concrete steps here on how you would do this, you can use regular Python sockets or you can use Flask sockets, which is kind of like a plugin for Flask or Django sockets. I believe they have a specific kind of plugin or framework uh, with Django if you're going to be building this on the web. Now, you don't have to build this on the web. You could build an interface in Pygame. You could build an interface in Kivi or in PyQt5. There's a ton of different kind of user interface libraries or modules in Python. Pick whatever you want, but you're going to need some way for users to type something in and then to see kind of the message log and maybe communicate with different people. All right, so now we're moving on to some data science and data analysis projects. Now, this is a very popular application of Python, and really, I think any project is good here, so long as you're pulling a large piece of data and actually drawing some meaningful conclusions from it. So as long as your project is actually doing something useful, it's not just displaying data, then I think you're going to have a good project. Here. Now, to give you a few ideas of what I'm thinking, maybe you pull a million tweets and you look at all those tweets and you analyze the sentiment of them. So you see if the tweets are happy or sad in terms of the general mood. And then maybe you graph that against the time when Twitter users are tweeting and you try to figure out what time of day Twitter users are the happiest, right? That's a project I could think of. Of course, you could do something with coronavirus data. I think that's not very original, especially because so many people have done that now. But that's a good, you know, classic example of data analysis. You could do something like graph your own data. Maybe you graph your spending habits and try to figure out the days you spend the most money, what you spend the most money on, maybe events that cause you to spend all of that type of stuff. There's lots of information that you can pull. And again, so long as you're doing something that's actually useful, I think you're going to have a good project. So stay away from anything where you're just, you know, graphing data or kind of displaying stuff that you've pulled. You want to be analyzing the data and actually pulling out some type of meaningful conclusion. And there's all kinds of Python modules that help you do this. For example, you could be using something like pandas. You could be using something like NumPy, like matplotlib. If you did want to visualize maybe the conclusions that you drew, there's all kinds of artificial intelligence packages. You have uh, natural language processing like the NLP module. You could import something like scikit-learn. You could import and use TensorFlow if you want to make a basic machine learning model. I'm just rattling off random ideas at this point, but I'm trying to give you some inspiration for a meaningful data science project. And hopefully I did that. All right. So my final project idea here is to build a data structure and algorithm visualizer. Now, I know you guys have heard this many times in the past. This is a very, very popular idea. However, I'm still going to recommend it because I think it's a really good resume project. And I'm going to tell you here to get more creative and unique in what you're visualizing as opposed to just a generic sorting algorithm or a data structure like a binary tree or a heap or something like that. In my opinion, those ones are kind of kind of boring. I have done them in the past because a lot of people like those types of projects, but I would recommend you visualize something that's not traditionally visualized. For example, maybe you make a game of chess. I've done this on the channel and you make kind of a very basic AI that plays chess. Maybe you visualize how the AI makes decisions on what piece is going to move next. Even if it's moving a piece that makes no sense and it's not the best AI, you're still visualizing something cool. And not only have you made the visualization, but you had to make the game to be able to do that. 
I've also done on this channel visualizing Sudoku. So that game, actually, I built it out first. So you could just play the game. And then I built a visualization tool, which showed you how the, I guess, AI solves the board using something called a backtracking algorithm. So get creative, pick algorithms for projects that aren't traditionally visualized. And then this gives you kind of a two in one. You build out a game or you build out a project and then you show how your AI or whatever it's going to be actually solves that, right? I think that's cool. I think that goes with data structure and algorithm visualization. And you can visualize multiple things at the same time. Maybe you visualize the data structure as well as the algorithm that's running. And then again, you kind of get a two in one. So that's my final idea here. To summarize, I had AI plays a video game. I had to build a social media clone at a live messaging app. I had some type of data science and data analysis project, specifically analyzing tweets or analyzing coronavirus data, pretty much any data, right? And then I had build a data structure and algorithm visualizer, but to get more unique and creative and pick something that's not traditionally visualized. All right, so with that said, that is going to wrap up this video. If you guys have any project ideas, please do share them down below. If you like these type of videos, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out programmingexpert.io from the link in the description, and I will see you in another YouTube video.